Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. More importantly, staying safe. It's been pretty active um, from late this morning all the way throughout the afternoon, all the way into this evening. We've had multiple uh, confirmed tornadoes. I've seen some damage on Twitter from a couple people. And, uh, you know, we mentioned this this morning about how there could be a chance for embedded tornadoes kind of literally embedded in some of these storms and this just blob of convection, heavy rain, and that has been the case. They have been definitely rain wrapped, if anything. It's not like you have tornadoes like you see out in the plains where, you know, you can, you know, actually see them. Chances are you're not seeing these because they're rain wrapped into a lot of heavy rain. So they come at you quick. So please be aware, weather aware over the next few hours in the panhandle of Florida, North Florida, southern areas of Georgia also because severe weather, the severe weather threat is ongoing right now. But we're going to focus in a lot on what could potentially happen tomorrow, and then we'll talk on a lot on what could happen this weekend. This weekend's a weird event. It's all about the placement of the low pressure. Also, timing is huge. Also, also, what is important is how much does the atmosphere destabilize, and you guys are probably wondering, Mitch, what day are you talking about? I'm talking about Sunday. Sunday is a tricky day in the southeast. we got to figure that one out. We'll give you the latest information. I've kind of mentioned it a couple times over the last several days. We're going to mention it again in this video. So, With that being said, if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below so I can pray over it and so other people can do it also. As of right now, severe thunderstorm watch up till uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time, and this includes all the yellow areas right here, all the counties in yellow, large portion of eastern Florida, and then all of pretty much the coastal regions of southeast Georgia. You could have a couple tornadoes are possible. You could have some larger hail up to two inch diameter, larger scattered winds up to 70 miles per hour or faster are possible. And then the latest one, you got a severe thunderstorm watch up in portions of eastern Arkansas, northern Mississippi. This does include Memphis, Tennessee also, and uh, a few counties, uh, several counties. And western Alabama does include Tuscaloosa. And uh, this really, these storms could really produce a lot of hail. There's a lot of cold air aloft up in this section. And, uh, you know, there's a guy on Twitter that posted a picture of a storm, I believe it was just outside of Starkville, and it had a rotating wall cloud on it. So you got to watch out. These could spin up here, too. You, you know, you can't rule out a tornado up here at all. So please be careful throughout the overnight hours in these areas. But let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow you have an enhanced risk. This is the big storyline. Could have massive hail with this. Big time hail storms are possible. Once again, around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And, and then all directions around it. It's definitely possible. It is a hail-driven enhanced risk, meaning they put the enhanced risk up for very large hail that is likely for someone, just like we saw yesterday. You, Texas got a little bit of a break today, but it gears right back up tomorrow. Slight risk extends all the way down to the Mexico uh, Texas border. Then you got a pretty large marginal risk. It stretches all the way from Miami all the way up here to southeast Ohio and all these areas in between the dark green. That is a level one out of five. Could get some scattered, strong to severe storms. Uh, I, would, I would say they're more so isolated. Not everybody's going to see it, <clears throat> but definitely could get some stronger storms. Tornado threat tomorrow, you got that 5% risk. We'll see if this upgrades to a 10% risk. It did the last time we had a day two enhanced risk a couple days ago. But right now, just that 5% risk, not a lot of favorable wind profiles aloft that supports uh, tornadoes, but that could change. Uh, really, the only reason why the, the tornado threat didn't really truly materialize yesterday was because the outflow boundary sagged too far south. And uh, it was moving too much. Uh, no storms could really latch onto it because it really wasn't stationary like we were kind of thinking it was going to be. But anyways, 15% risk of uh, winds pushing 50 knots or higher. But the hail threat, not only do you have that 30% risk of hail and 2 inch diameter, you also have a 10% risk on its own of large hail pushing 2 inch. I'm sorry, pushing two inch diameter or larger, 30% chance of hell pushing one inch diameter or larger. So big hell day in the state of Texas tomorrow for sure. So let's go on and talk about that. I'll start it off. It's 1 p.m. Texas time, central time out here. There's not much going on. You got some cold rain, cooler rain up in the Panhandle, of Texas. Outside of that, nothing's going on yet, but it, it happens really quick. 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and if you're wondering what time frame we're at, 
Uh, back this up one hour. This is an Eastern time. I can't make it in Central time, so it's really 3 p.m. And then bang, you go from nothing to a massive supercell. Maybe not a supercell, but it's a pretty strong storm. These will be supercells producing large hail. And then you go to the next time frame, and this is the Fort Worth area right here, Dallas right in here. I always know these two counties because of this little small baby county right here. It always reminds me that these are two counties that Dallas, Fort Worth, and uh, the Dallas, Fort Worth are in. But this storm fires up just west of the town, potentially, and then it keeps going, and then bang, it really explodes. And let's hope that the HRRR model does not verify because around 4 or 5 p.m. as a massive large hail producing storm right over the Dallas Fort Worth area. You keep this going next time frame. This is only a three hour span. This storm is continuing and then immediately you have convection that blows up a little bit more isolated in nature down here in central Texas. But you know, these storms will be powerful south of Dallas, you know, all the way to out. I would say Abilene is a, is out of it. I would say y'all are a little bit too far west. But you know, you go south down to those regions. I hate I don't have my Google Maps pulled up. I can't spit out a couple of towns and communities to, to try to start memorizing some of these communities out here in Texas. But anywhere basically around the Dallas Fort, Fort Worth area, a little bit, maybe a county or two north. You get too far north to get into more stable air, which is good. But I would say just east, just west, and a good extension south of the city runs the risk of very, very large hail. But you keep this going, and it kind of turns into a mesoscale convective system, MCS for short, meaning it's just a kind of jumbled up area of storms, but it's producing large hail. Wind it won't be the, the big, big threat. These will be embedded supercells in this line of storms by the time you get into 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m. I know I got a I think I think I think your name's Mary. It's Mary. Yeah, I believe you live in Northeast Texas. Please watch out tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. I would say late evening, seven to nine p.m. Really watch out. Be aware of some nasty storms in Northeast Texas for sure, because you see that pink right there. To me, the H triple R model is trying to say, hey, that could be a big time storm producing large hail. So please be aware. I'm telling you guys, if there is a way, it sounds weird, but even if there's a way just to drive your your vehicle up the road, if there's a carport, if there's somewhere where you can park it under something and you have a risk of hell, and that's, I, I would, I would, I would try, you know, that's why I always promote radar scope or some kind of radar you can look at. It's unbelievable how people let these storms sneak up on them. You can physically see them. Sometimes that when you have that green tint to some of these storms, you know, it's producing hell. That green tint that you see in storms out here, that is, that is because of hell. Sometimes it's hailing so hard in these storms. It's something called a hail roar. And you can actually hear, you can hear the hail falling in the storm and you just, just you, you can just visibly see it, but you can hear it from a distance. It's called a hail roar. But when you see that greenish tint in these storms, that is hell. That is actually light reflecting off these ice particles or ice balls, the hell. So I don't know if you guys knew that, but if you see that coming right towards you, I would protect your belongings, protect your cars, because big time hell is probably heading right towards you, hell core. Uh, but the, you keep this rolling, guys, and these storms will still be intense. This starts to drift into southeast Texas, could be quite intense. We got to watch out even around midnight, big storms starting to enter the Corpus Christi area. And then by the time you get into this evening, well, tomorrow evening, and I'm sorry, guys, into Saturday morning, this begins to dwindle away, but it could last throughout most of the night tomorrow. And really what's driving this, guys, is, is you know, a ton of, uh, there, there's a lot of cape in the atmosphere in response to, hmm, I thought that I had my dew points pulled up. Let's see, they're right here, I believe. Yeah, dew points. So what's interesting about dew points in tomorrow's setup is you'll wake up to some drier air dew points in the 50s and <clears throat> excuse me in the dallas fort worth area where you're going to expect a large hail threat in a few in, in the next several hours after tomorrow morning well you know you're waking up to some pretty stable conditions dew points only in the low 50s but as you move later in the morning into the early afternoon hours dew points will rise into the low 60s mid 60s therefore your, your storm fuel will rise, your cape levels will rise, and then you get a lot more stable, dry air that kind of flushes out the atmosphere and then stabilizes it. But in response to, ah, we gotta get this moving. 
In response to those dew points rising, you have your cape levels that rise. You know, and this is around 1 p.m. tomorrow. Look at that cape right here, Dallas-Fort Worth area right here. You're going to have a nose of cape, storm fuel, that kind of rises right up here in North Texas. 2,000, 2,500 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape. That is going to support some robust thunderstorm development. And, uh, I mean, even, even higher. I mean, you look at this little area right in here. That's pushing over 3,000 joules per kilogram. So a little nose of cape builds up here in the North Texas cold dry air aloft and you're gonna have a big time hell producer and then you look at the updraft felicity swath you got a mean signal for a rotating thunderstorm right over the dallas fort worth area i'm not saying there's going to be a massive wedge that rolls through the city but i'm just saying to watch that area for sure um, keep going tomorrow there's a severe weather risk in georgia and the carolinas up into the mid-atlantic also and really, most of the moisture will, as it clears out, a lot of heavy rain will fall overnight tonight. In fact, it's knocking on our doorstep here in the here in the central South Carolina right now. But, you know, probably around 2, 3, 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, you'll see some scattered convection developing in the southern Appalachian Mountains, uh, you know, Tennessee, eastern Kentucky, uh, you know, upstate South Carolina, north Georgia maybe. I would say especially the foothills of North Carolina. And to the Piedmont, North Carolina, could have some storms. And I don't see really any a tornado threat with this, but I could see a, some hail falling with this. Um, a lot of small hail is possible. I wouldn't say large hail, but it's possible. But I would say a lot of small hail is possible with some of these storms tomorrow. If there's a storm that looks really nice and it's close enough right after I get off work tomorrow, I might go chase it. But I'm trying to save and kind of watch Sunday. That might be a chase day for me. But you keep this going, you know, just especially in the mountainous areas of, uh, you know, West Virginia, uh, Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, the hills, uh, you know, Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, you know, certainly some heavier downpours and rumble of thunder and some storm action. Then in kind of the sand hills, the Eastern areas, the Carolinas, some scattered thunderstorm development for your Friday evening is certainly possible. Got to watch out for a quick spin up. It is possible, but I would say your biggest threat is hail and some gusty winds. Then we move a little bit further north. You'll be dealing with a lot of heavy rain tomorrow morning in Virginia, West Virginia, and this will move into the state of Pennsylvania. And then you'll have a sector that kind of arrives. The atmosphere will try to destabilize. And you certainly could get some, a strong thunderstorm or two in Ohio tomorrow afternoon. West Virginia already mentioned these areas. And def definitely watch up here up here in Ohio. You know, you definitely can have some storms that produce some hail um, uh, throughout the afternoon, evening hours. Uh, definitely not expecting a big severe weather threat. No, no reason to be worried whatsoever. There's also a severe weather threat for your Saturday uh, where there's just a lot of moisture still just down here along the Gulf Coast, but not expecting a big severe weather day with this. But at the same time, would not be surprised one bit if you get an upgrade to a slight risk down here. So definitely pay attention to that. It's just kind of one of those setups. Next thing we'll talk about is Sunday. I want to mention this is day four. Sunday is day four. Right now, its predictability is too low. Okay, so there's no slight risk at day four right now. I'm going to be interested to see what they do for this day as we wake up tomorrow morning. Well, they put like a marginal risk over here, but Sunday is a day I'm watching. And, you know, a couple of us, a couple of us in the Carolinas have been in Virginia have been chattering about this over the last few days, but it's, it's, it's a day we need to watch. And this is why. So this low pressure that's going to create all the severe weather in Texas tomorrow, it's that's going to continue to, to dive um, out of the Rockies, out of the western U.S., and we'll dive into Texas, create all the severe weather, and this will round the base of troughing, basically a dip in the jet stream. And then as we get into Saturday afternoon, this will kind of ride the Gulf Coast, and then eventually we're getting into Saturday night. We could be dealing with a lot of showers and thunderstorms, um, in the Gulf states, the deep south, all the way up to the Carolinas, the panhandle of uh, Florida. And then we watch the placement of this low pressure. One thing you'll notice is this low pressure, that number is beginning to drop. That signifies that the low pressure is deepening, it's strengthening. So we're waking up Sunday morning. I know this is kind of teeny to see on your screen, but we're waking up Sunday morning to a lot of, lot of storm action, a lot of convection, a lot of morning heavy rain. Where is the placement of this low pressure going to be? We can actually just go on and zoom in. Uh, Pivotal Weather. I love Pivotal Weather. It's actually a very cheap, great site, especially especially for severe weather. But the, the using this can be a little difficult sometimes because it likes to be everywhere. But like I said, we're getting a Sunday morning, a lot of shower and storm development. 
I mean, you could be waking up to a mess as you're getting ready for church or any kind of Sunday morning activities. And then this low pressure, where does this L go? Does it track further west? Does it track exactly where it's showing right now? If it tracks further east, you would just get a heavy rain threat. And then the rain shield would shift more so to the east. If it goes right where it's going right now, you're going to probably have some kind of severe weather threat in the eastern Carolinas and probably in Georgia and Florida in the morning the wee hours of the morning, uh, Sunday morning probably, and then eventually it could ride up to Virginia. If it shifts more west, you're going to open up the opportunity for a more broader severe weather threat for a much larger area. It brings the sector of dynamics inland. But, you know, we're getting into early Sunday afternoon, low pressure flying over the upstate of South Carolina, and uh, I think we could have some fast-moving, powerful storms that are possible if the euro is correct. You got 987 millibar low pressure. It's deepening to its strengthening. This, to me, is going to bring a lot of strong winds, regardless of the severe weather threat for Sunday. It's going to be a mess Sunday along the I-95 corridor. I really think it is. You look at the dynamics that, that's going into this based off the euro's track. Getting the Sunday morning dew points are already rising. Big moist sector rising in the eastern Carolinas, Georgia, certainly down there in Florida. I mean, you're, you're getting into about mid-morning Sunday. Dew points are in the 70s around Myrtle Beach, Georgetown. And then we get into about Sunday afternoon. How much does the atmosphere destabilize from all the morning rain and convection and storms? That's a huge question. If the atmosphere destabilizes and the low pressure takes a similar track of what the Euro is showing, you're going to have a severe weather threat that arrives somewhere in the eastern Carolinas, maybe even Virginia. So that that we got to watch this, okay? Big moist sector that's definitely inland enough. And then behind it, dry, stable air moves in for the next next week. But you know, in response to all that the higher those higher dew points, you look at your mixed layer cape. And I mean, look, this is about mid-morning, Sunday morning. You got Cape levels over a thousand joules per kilogram. And we'll watch to see how much they rise. And this is what the instability thing is. If you get clearing, the sun comes out, then that is when the fuel begins to build. That, that's ready to build. Okay, but you got to get the warming, the thermodynamics to really build, surface warming, the temperatures to rise. And that's what's going to fuel a severe weather threat. And that's what you don't want to see. Because I honestly, if you look at this, this is an area of Cape. I know it's not a lot, but it's enough. When you're sitting here and you're looking at the wind profiles that look like this. Okay, you're getting into Sunday morning. You have a 50 knot, maybe 55 knot low level jet. That's winds moving at about 65, maybe 70 miles per hour, about a five, 6,000 feet above our heads over areas of southeast Georgia, the low country of South Carolina, eastern South Carolina, Sunday morning. This will mix to the surface, and you're going to have very strong winds, I think, blowing in this region. And then you get, you know, you're getting into about mid-morning Sunday. you got a 50 to 60 knot low-level jet flying over the PD of South Carolina, southeast North Carolina, Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, Charleston. Powerful wind field. So if you get any instability that builds in this region... I'm telling you, Sunday is going to be a day that just kind of comes out of nowhere for some people. So th there's a chance that this goes away, but then there's a chance that it comes right back. Okay, so, you know, this is dangerous. I mean, you got, you know, I'm speaking on it like there's a high chance it can happen. What I'm saying is there's a high ceiling from this, but there's a chance it doesn't happen at all. You get just heavy rain. Okay. So we got to watch this because these are some pro prolific wind profiles and you definitely don't want to see this. Um, I can tell you one thing, a lot of rain is going to fall between now and about May 2nd. This is rain between now and uh, May 2nd. A lot of this is going to fall overnight, um, but anywhere from two to four inches all the way up the I-95 corridor, also inland too. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We got rain knocking on my doorstep right here, here in central South Carolina. Definitely excited about it. We've had... I think a thirtieth, a thirtieth of an inch. No, I just can't even speak. We've had a little over a quarter inch of a rain um, here in my neck of the woods over the last seventeen days. So just, just not a lot of rain. So, but that's all I got, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. You guys have a blessed night, and uh, I'll talk to you in the morning.